What's up guys, today we are inside of Affinity Designer version 2 and I want to show you how we can use the isometric feature in order to make ourselves a mock-up. So in this tutorial what I'm going to create is a cereal box and I'll show you how you can add your own design to that in order to get a 3D representation of your product. So one thing I do want to mention before I get started is that the isometric feature is also available in V1 of Affinity Designer. This is not a new feature. So whether you're running version 2 or version 1, you can follow along with this tutorial. Okay, so to get started, all you got to do is open up yourself a brand new canvas. And for me, I just chose a 1080 pixel by 1080. And that has given me the square on the screen in front of you. Then what we need to do next is head over to the right hand side layer panel. And we can see over here on the far right hand side, we have this isometric option. If you guys aren't seeing the isometric option, then just simply go all the way up to the top menu bar on the left hand side, go up to where it says window, go down and just make sure that you have that isometric option checked and then that you'll also have that available. So once you've located your isometric panel, what we need to do next is we need to go down to where it says grid settings, open that up. Then at the top here, we have this option that says show grid. So once you select that, we can now see we have a grid inside of our canvas. And we're just going to leave all of these settings the way that they are. We don't really need to mess around with any of these. So just go ahead and hit close on that. Then to get started with our design, the first thing that we want to do is draw ourselves a box. So if we make our way over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we will select the rectangle tool. At the moment, it doesn't matter what size rectangle that you draw out. So we'll just do something rough. What we need to do after we drew our rectangle is we've got to assign it to the plane on the direction that we want to go in. And the way that we would do that, if we head back over to the right hand side inside of our isometric panel, we have these three different options, which says front, side and top. And we just need to figure out where we're going to begin. So for this piece, it's going to be the bottom of the box. So I'm going to choose that top option there so we can kind of see in blue the direction of the grid. So once I select that top, I'm going to come down to where it says fit to plane. Then once I select that, you can see it will rotate the rectangle into the plane. Then what I want to do next, as I want this in the other direction, I'm just going to rotate that anti-clockwise. So once I've done that, I'll head back over to the left hand side toolbar menu and I will grab the move tool. Then it's just a case of coming back down here and just adjusting the size and width of this to something that you are happy with. So I'm just going to drag that all the way down to around there and make that a little bit smaller, making sure that it snaps to my grid. If you guys find that this isn't snapping to grid for you, then just go up to the top here where we have our magnet. Go inside the little drop down menu and just make sure that you have snap to grid checked. So moving on, if we now draw the next piece of our box by grabbing ourselves another rectangle on the left hand side, once again, just draw that to any rough size or shape that you would like for the moment. Then we're going to go back over to the right hand side and focus on the next direction that we are going to go in. And we're going to go for the side option here. So I'm going to flick onto that one. I'm going to go down once again to where it says fit to plane. And now you can see that the grid itself has changed direction. So once again, we'll go ahead and grab our move tool and we're just going to go ahead and move it into place, making sure that snaps onto our grid. And then just drag your handles up to your snapping position where you want this to be and drag that all the way down to that corner. And now we just need to do this side panel as well as the top. But before I do that, I think I'm going to make my box just a little bit more narrow. So I'm just going to drag that side in, select that bottom piece as well. And I'll just drag that down just to snap that into place. And that is looking better. So what we're going to do for the top piece is we'll just duplicate the one we've got at the bottom here. So if we hit command or control C to copy and command or control V to paste, we just simply drag that one up and just snap that into place up here. Then all we got to do next is this final piece here on the side. So once again, if we go and grab ourselves another rectangle, just draw that out to any rough shape or size. Then we'll go back over to the right hand side. This time we're going to choose that front option. Go ahead and choose fit to plane. And then just like before, go ahead and grab your move tool, move this into position, making sure that snaps, drag that down all the way to the bottom and over there to the left hand side, snapping that into place. And then that is our box finished. And what we're going to do next, just to make this a little bit better, is we're going to go over to our layers and we'll just change the colors of these. So I'll grab that front piece or that side piece for the moment and I'll go ahead and I'll give that more of a gray color. And we'll just make our way through all of these and just kind of, Make them a little bit darker to make it seem more 3D and realistic. 
And then I will grab that top piece as well, go ahead and change that color, making that a little bit more darker than the side and the front. Then with the one at the bottom, I'm going to leave that black. But what we're going to do with this is use that as a shadow. So with that one selected, if we make our way down towards the bottom to our effects, once we go inside of here, we are going to choose Gaussian or Gaussian Blur, however you guys like to pronounce that. Then inside of here, we'll just bring this radius up, just making ourselves a little shadow. Not too much, just a little bit subtle. So somewhere around, I'll say 3.4 would be perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll close that. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to turn our grid off so we can see our box a little bit better. So if we go back over to the isometric option over in our layer panel, then we'll go back down to where it says grid settings. Then just go ahead and check off show grid and that will turn that off. And then there is our box. So what we're going to do next is bring in any kind of design that we would like to use in our mock-up. So just to be a bit quicker with the video, I've already pre-designed something in my other canvas over here. So as you can see, I've just put together a little cereal box design. And this literally took me five minutes. It's a really bad design, but it really is just for demonstration purposes. So hopefully you guys have come up with something a lot better than this. But if we just go over to the layers, we can just see how I put this together. All we've got for the front here is literally just a rectangle, which I drew. And I put a green gradient on that. Inside of the rectangle, all I've got is just a little bit of text, which has got some filler text. I have a picture of a cereal bowl, which I got off Google. I have a picture of a monster, which I drew and I just imported. And then just the name of the cereal. And I've just copied a few of these elements and put them inside of these other rectangles that I drew. So with that out of the way, what we're going to do next is now take this over to our other design so we can put it onto the box. So first of all, I'll decide what piece I'm going to take first. So it's going to be this front cover right there. So if I go ahead and grab that, I'm going to make a copy with command or control C to copy. Then I'm going to head back over to my other canvas where we have designed the box and I'll paste this in here with command or control V. And looking at this, I think I may have an issue when I come to resize this with that text, maybe not changing size as you can see. And it did do that. It stays the same size as I start to shrink that. So what I'm going to do is actually delete that. Then I'll go back to my project. And instead of bringing this in as the project file or the folder, instead, what I'm going to do is convert that to a pixel layer. So I'm just going to right click on that. I'm going to go down to where it says rasterize and trim. I'm going to select that option right there. And now this has been converted to a pixel layer. So once I go to resize this, it's not going to make any difference. So once again, I'm going to hit command or control C to copy, head back over to my other canvas, hit command or control V to paste. Then I'll go ahead and resize that now without any problems and just move that roughly into position. So all we got to do next is head back over to the right hand side layer panel and go back to our isometric option. And then we're going to go ahead and find the side that we want this to apply to, which is going to be that side piece right there. So once again, select that side panel, go down to where it says fit to plane. And you can see that has rotated that in the exact same direction and will snap perfectly to our grid. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that around and snap that into place. Then I'm going to grab my handles just while I resize that, just to make sure I fill the whole front cover and just drag that side as well. Let that snap. Then that is our front piece done, as you can see. Then I'll make my way back over to the other design and I'll grab this side piece. And once again, instead of bringing in the whole project or folder, I'm going to also right click on that one and choose rasterize and trim. Then I'll make a copy of that with command or control C. Go back over again and paste it in with command or control V. Just resize that slightly. Then just like before, we're going to go back over to our isometric option. This time around, we want to choose the front option, fit to plane. And then just like before, we're going to go ahead and snap that into place around our box and then go ahead and resize that on the side and then go and grab that from the bottom and just make sure we snap that around the box just like that. And then I'll go ahead and hit command or control zero to fit to screen. And finally, I'll go back to my design and I'll grab the top piece. Once again, I'm going to rasterize and trim that by right clicking. Then I'll make a copy of that again. Go back over to my project, paste that one in. Just resize that slightly back over to our isometric option. This time around, we're going to choose top fit to plane, and then we just need to rotate this around. So it's in the right direction. Then we'll go and snap that just like we did before, and then just resize that into the size that we need. So I'll drag that up there and I'll pull that just to there. 
And then that is our box finished in terms of making the quick mock-up. But of course, you would make this a little bit more creative by adding some shadows and highlights around your box. And we can do that by simply changing the blend modes of these pieces that we put in of our design. So if I choose the front here and I'll change the blend mode to multiply, then I'll go over to the rectangle that has made the front of our box. And I can make my way over to the left hand side and I will grab my fill tool. And I'm going to put a gradient on this. So I'm going to go a bit darker from one side to lighter to the other. Then I'll just flip that around to be on the opposite direction. And the way that we would do that is just by going up to the top here and just hitting that reverse button for the gradient. And then we've got the darker shadow over that side. And we can just adjust that handle and then just move that around and just get that more in the position that you would like it to be. And then over this side, we're going to make that a little bit brighter white. And you can do the same kind of thing on the side panel as well as the top and just get a bit more creative with different types of effects. So it's probably worth mentioning that we could have actually made this mock-up without drawing ourselves a box. We could have just simply imported all of our designs, gone into the isometric option, and then just applied each piece of our design to the grid. However, the reason that I did go ahead and do the box is when you guys want to get a bit more creative with maybe using the gradient or adding textures or any other kind of effects, this is where you're going to want the box as the effects are going to be applied to that rather than the images themselves. Plus, it's always really good practice just to have a little play around with the isometric option and see what you can create. So with all that said and done, I hope you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you did, then please go ahead and give me a thumbs up as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And of course, if you haven't already, then please go ahead and smash that subscribe button and check out any other Affinity Designer videos that I've already created, as well as keep up to date with the ones that I'm going to be releasing. And if any of you guys would like to support my channel with any future content, then you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description. And in the description, you will also find a link to my Etsy store where you will find some products that I've created if you guys want to go ahead and check those out. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in my next video.